everybody. Um, I'm just here to do um, a little uh, tutorial. Um, so lately in my journals, I think I've done it a couple of times now, I've created these kind of envelope um, book things um, that I kind of think are quite cool because they make an extra page in the journal. So I thought I would try and do a tutorial and just show you how to kind of assemble them. Um, super simple. Uh, so, you know, I hope I'm not kind of teaching people to suck eggs here, but I just thought you might like to see, um, you know, my process of kind of how I do them. So first of all, I'm just starting with this um, envelope here. This um, has been coffee dyed and obviously, as you can see, it still has the flap here um, opening, which is how we want it. And this is for this journal that I'm working on at the, whoops, at the moment. Um, it's got a blue um, theme and very floral. Um, so I'm working on this at the moment and I thought I would do one for this journal. So that's where it's going to go. So what I've done, I have used this gorgeous um, ladybird book. I did show these um, in my process video. I had one um, with Peter and Jane. So I managed to pick up quite a um, bundle of these gorgeous Ladybird vintage books um, from my charity shop. And this one here is British Wild Flowers and it just has the most gorgeous images in it. Um, pages and pages of lovely, vibrant, really pretty floral images. So I have used a few of the pages so far to make the bits that are going to go into my journal. Um, and I thought I would obviously use um, another couple for this envelope page that I'm going to make. So that's the book that I've taken the images from. And I have torn out, I've actually torn out all of the pages from the book. Um, but these two images are the ones that I thought that I would use for the actual um, envelope that I'm going to make. So I've got this one here. Um, which I think is the one that I would like to use. Um, I need to decide obviously which side I want this opening, whether I want it opening this side or whether I want it obviously opening this side. Um, I don't think it matters hugely. I've got a few blank pages in the book um, that need kind of things on them. Uh, so, you know, I'm not kind of hugely worried. Um, but I think, just have a flick through the journal sorry if this is now a little bit boring um just okay so i think i'm going to do it um actually this way around so that it's opening this way so what i'm going to start by doing i'm at my son's desk again so i'm just moving some of his stuff out of the way I'm going to start by doing, I've just bought um, a bunch of items with me obviously for the sake of this tutorial and I've got here um, some of my kind of current favourite stamps, I'm not saying they are always my favourites but um, the stamps that I'm really enjoying using at the moment. So I'm just, literally I've just put them in a little tin just for the sake of tutorials. Um, you know for the sake of this tutorial for anything that I might like to use while I'm here so I'm just going to take this stamp so as you can see it's a clear um, stamp so a clear cling stamp I'll move that box out of the way um, and when I'm using this I don't even tend to actually stick it onto um, you know one of the clear blocks because um, I, I don't actually find that I need to and using it this way I can actually kind of just use elements of the stamp rather than the whole thing so I mean obviously I can stamp it kind of here utilizing the entire corner stamp I love corner stamps or you know even using other stamps in the corners um, or what I often quite like to do using this particular stamp is just kind of use this little section here um, because I think that's just really nice in the corners um, so I just kind of literally ink up this kind of section and stamp it in the corners. Um, I have also got this uh, little stamp, which I have been using quite a bit recently. Um, so I could use this one 
and again I would just stamp little sections of this probably this top section and stamp it in the corners so I will show you now so I'm just using my stays on and it's just timber brown um, stays on I've kind of moved away a bit from using the black I do still use the black for certain things um, but the timber brown actually I love because it's just slightly less harsh um, but still very you know very deep color so um, just have a look <clears throat> I might go for this one actually rather than the clear one so I'm just going to literally ink up this kind of section so I'll just ink that like that and then I just stamp it on in the corners and again it doesn't have to be perfect I'm not looking to get it symmetrical or anything like that and I can kind of carry it on a little bit for a bit more I can have some kind of going up the edge like that just so it's kind of got a bit of interest um, and obviously the majority of this is actually going to be covered up anyway by the image that I'm going to stick onto the envelope so just sticking it like that or stamping it sorry like that randomly around the edges so that probably is enough so I'm going to move the stamp and the ink out of the way and then I'll just see how that looks so as you can see it's just kind of got a little bit of a frame now going around now what I'm going to do is cut this image down because I don't want it necessarily as large as this so because I'm really going for kind of more the floral look in this journal I'm you know not necessarily wanting kind of quite so much up here so I'm going to start by cutting probably just kind of that top strip there so literally about a centimeter or two off of the top and I think I've said now a few times I mean I don't tend to measure things I just literally eyeball them and kind of hope for the best really um, so that's that and straight away that looks a bit better because it's slightly better shape really for the um, envelope and then I'm just going to trim off a couple of these bits down the edge because where it's been torn out of the book you can kind of obviously see quite a bit of white on the side so I'll cut that like that just see how that looks now so I quite like how that's looking and then what I'm going to do is just and I showed this in my process video again what I quite like to do is just rough up the edges just using the serrate uh, the you know the blade edge of the scissors I just take that like that and go around the edges just to give it a bit of a a bit of a texture really to it um, and also it's quite good for when you ink it up because obviously then there's a little bit more for the ink to actually hold on to so that's that so what I'll do now is take my <coughs> distressing and I will just ink around the actual image itself so again you know just quite quickly inking up not being kind of too precise or careful or anything um, you know because sometimes you can kind of make these things look too neat and then you've lost the kind of um, vintagey rusticy look I think um, so I'll just do it like that so that I think looks quite pretty now what I could do is actually kind of layer it um, underneath some or you know on top of some paper but actually I'm going to leave it without a so sort of second layer without it being layered up because what I might do is take some stamped images oops I've got here like a little postmark that I've just stamped and cut out and I can kind of put some little bits and bobs kind of around the image um, for interest if I want to so what I'm going to do is obviously take the page, turn it over, and then just glue it down onto the envelope. So again, I'm using my Anita's Tacky Glue, and I just give it a really good covering. Like that. I'll just go over it like this. Then turn it over. Oops. Like that. 
and then I'm going to stick it down the boards along again, the card here, and I just place it down like that. Just making sure that it's nicely stuck onto the envelope. And then obviously, um, you know, if I want to, I can obviously distress ink around the envelope. So I might just quickly do that. Don't want to go too mad because actually it's been um, coffee stained and it's quite dark. I mean, obviously kind of the coffee staining, you know, comes out differently each time you do it, depending on how much coffee to water that you have. Um, again, I mean, I don't have a precise kind of measure. I have um, heard some people kind of say that they use you know a precise kind of measurement i i don't do that i kind of just get a couple of spoonfuls and put it into the bowl or the cup or whatever um and then i tend to recently i have been painting it on with a really fat paintbrush um and drying the items in the oven just for speed um but i have sometimes soaked them into a big kind of roasting tray um but you know i just find for kind of speed that the painting it on with the brush actually is is quickest so that's that. Now that looks really nice kind of already. And obviously, as you can see, it obviously opens like that anyway. So then what I'm going to do, <coughs> I want to make a little folding book to go here on this flap. So I have brought along a couple of different bits, whoops, bits of paper here. Um, the first one is actually the cover back of the cover of some sheet music so it's properly vintage um, you know very old looking and I thought actually that that might look quite nice on the journal it's um, quite a kind of bluey grey colour so I thought colour wise it would go quite nicely I thought it would go quite nicely with the kind of florally images that I'm using so I'm going to try that so basically all I'm going to do is cut it uh, sorry uh, fold it in half and actually I forgot to bring my um, bone um, folder so I'm just going to use the handles of my scissors here and then all I'm going to do is cut it down so I probably want to use the text rather than kind of other elements as you can see the book had been sti uh, stuck down with some tape I don't want to have that obviously so I'm going to cut that side off so I'll turn it over and do this side first like that and then I mean obviously I'm aiming to make this much smaller than the envelope so it's kind of a hidden booklet so what I'm going to do is cut the other side kind of similar space away from the text like that and see whether that looks good so Okay, so I quite like that size. And then obviously I want to kind of cut it down here because this side is, you know, far too big. So I'm just going to cut it, first of all, start out here, and then I'll see how that's kind of going in accordance with the envelope. So, whoops. So there we go. So that's that. And as you can see, it opens out like a kind of booklet. So then what I've done here, obviously I, I haven't coffee stained this or anything because it is vintage and it looks pretty old anyway. But what I have done is I've brought along a couple of A4 sheets of coffee dyed paper. So basically, <clears throat> I'm just thinking, so excuse me, right. So actually this piece, as you can see, is quite torn. So actually I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the other one. So I'm going to fold this here. So that's in the middle. Again, I haven't got my bone folder. And actually I have just noticed that this also is torn. So what I might do is use a page from each of the papers. Um, but then what I can do, I can either just tear it, so if I just kind of, obviously, make that fold a little bit deeper, I can just tear it, which gives a nice rusticy edge. 
and this is where on camera nothing was going to go right and it will just look appalling. So that's that piece and then what I'm going to do is actually because the other one was torn as well I'm going to use the top half of this coffee dyed paper. So exactly the same, I should just fold it over nice and deep on the other side. And then again, just tear that like this. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, you know, we're really going for a kind of vintagey, rustic -y look, so that's absolutely fine. And move them out of the way. And then, as you can see, I've got these two pieces now, which will act as pages for my book. So I'm just going to fold that one over. And this one. Now, as you can see, this paper actually has got a slight tear here um, and a slight tear here. I mean, that doesn't worry me, um, but I want to point it out because obviously this is going in a journal that will be for sale um, in my shop. So I just want to kind of highlight those kind of defects, really. Um, or what some might call defects, you know. I, I think they're kind of nice. But... So pop that in there. Now, as you can see, it's not quite the right size. It's actually slightly too big. So that little edge here is actually slightly too big. So after all that careful tearing, <laughs> now I'm going to cut it down anyway. So... What I can do is either just hold it or, you know, kind of I can try and be a little bit more precise and clip it with the bulldog clip and then just cut it. Didn't need much taking off, so just cut it like that. And I have discovered that obviously cutting it into the fold is much better than cutting it away from the fold, which then you get kind of straggly pages. Um, <clears throat> So there's your pages there. Okay, so that's looking pretty, pretty good. So just fold that over to show you how that's going to look. So now to put these in, you can obviously stitch them on the sewing machine. I'm not going to do that because obviously I would then have to stop this video and I'm on my iPad. I don't know how you join two videos together. So what I'm going to do is I can clip it with the board of clips, one on either side, just like this. And then what I can do is using my stapler. Now, some people I'm sure have got those long arm, arm staplers, mine isn't. So what you can do is obviously kind of fold the pages slightly so as you can get in here, like this which weirdly, I'm going to be using the stapler this way round, I think, just trying to think. Um, so that I kind of have the flat, neater side of the staples showing, um, rather than the kind of undersides, although I don't suppose it really matters, to be honest. Um, I I'm just overthinking things now, I'm just waffling on, um, I'm afraid. So, right, let's just go for it. So I can put a staple about here along the fold or the alternative thing that you can do is obviously whoops, open the stapler up and I bought some felt along you could just you know kind of put something padded underneath it could be an eraser or felt or whatever and kind of staple it down this way um, I mean I personally think the folding method works fine just to kind of show you for the sake of the video you can do this as well and then obviously you're going to have to fold these um, what would you call them arms of the staples in like that so with my scissors just making sure that they're kind of secure okay and then I should undo that so that's my little booklet here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this onto the flap. Now, I quite like it personally with this side of the text, the kind of bottom half of the text. I quite like the kind of shape of the text here. So what I'm going to do 
is just kind of roughly look where it's going to go. So, I mean, you can kind of um, just mark it slightly with your nail or, you know, kind of eyeball it really. Um, and then basically you're gluing it onto the flap of the envelope. So plenty of glue so that it's really nicely stuck down. And then take your newly made booklet and then just pop it in like that. Any excess glue, obviously you can just wipe it off there. Okay, so that's that. And then again, just take your um, card or, you know, if you've got another method, obviously you know, just spread it out to make sure that it's kind of properly glued on to the flap of the envelope there, like that. So that's that. So now you've got a kind of booklet going on here in your envelope. So as you can see, you've still got obviously the envelope here to use <clears throat> and you've also got a sort of hidden secret booklet in here. Now what I like to do is then, if I'm into my tying things up, so you could stop here and leave it like that, um, but I like using some strings. I have this kind of, it's quite fine string, it's not too thick and fat and chunky or anything. Um, and then what I kind of do is tie it round. And the reason that I tie it before gluing it is really so that I have it exactly where I want it and obviously cut it to approximately the right length. So that's kind of, to me, that looks pretty central. And when I turn it over, it seems pretty central too. And then what I'm going to do is just glue that string onto here. So just going to pop some glue down here. Now again, I have found that this glue does hold it really well. If you were worried um, that your string wasn't going to hold your booklet in place, then what you can do is actually go um, over it and pop a line of paper on. So I'll do that for the purposes of the video to just kind of show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna take one of those little scraps that we cut from the edge of the um, sheet music cover, and I'm just going to cut it to size roughly. Oops, like this. And then I'm just going to glue that onto there. It's just really to kind of hold the string even further in place um, to stop it, you know, coming unstuck or anything. Because the last thing you want is obviously your string coming unstuck. Also, if you're likely to use um, this booklet as a pocket, it's rather nice to have obviously the string protected here rather than open kind of when you're slipping things in and out of the pocket because obviously that would be putting potential stress and weakening you know, the string where it's kind of glued in. So I just glue that in like that. There we have it. So that's pretty secure now. And obviously I've said before, this glue is pretty fast drying. So <clears throat> obviously opening it up again. Now what you can do is obviously decorate your cover of your little booklet. So I've got this obviously book page, I could cut this down and have it in there, but I feel it may be kind of too much having two pages from the book kind of straight after each other, so I'm not sure how much I like that. I thought I had brought stamped image along, so excuse all the rustling, I'm just having a look. So I've brought along this stamped image of this lady um, which I quite like and she looks quite pretty on there so what I can do is obviously pop her on so again I'll just rough around the edges like that <clears throat> I hope to 
goodness that I'm staying in frame and I'm not doing all this out of frame. So uh, fingers crossed. And then I will just distress her. She's again, she's been stamped onto coffee stained um, just paper, um, quite thickish paper. But I would just um, distress around the edge of her. Like that. And what I can do is obviously layer her up. I bought along that blue paper that is, you know, coordinating nicely with the album or with the journal. So I could layer her onto there, um, or actually this is double-sided paper, I could layer her onto there. Um, that looks quite nice. Actually, it should even fit on that bottom bit. So that's what I might do, is actually pop her on there. So what I'll do, I'll glue her first. before I cut the um, cardstock. <clears throat> I'll just glue her on like that. And then again, take my card wherever I've now put it. Yes. And just make sure that she's stuck down nicely onto the, onto the paper. And I'm just going to cut her out. It's quite strange doing these tutorials because you, you know, you're having to cut and do things even more cat-handed than I usually am. Because I guess a bit like you know when you're acting and you're not allowed to. Um, you know, they tell you, you know, don't turn your back to the stage or to the audience or whatever. Um, you know, just from drama at school, kind of all those years ago. Um, you know, don't turn your back to the audience. And it's a bit like that doing these tutorials. It's kind of like, ooh, cut this, but so people can see what I'm doing. And it makes you have to do it in a strange way. Um, which, yeah, a bit kind of odd, really. Um, anyway, just waffling on there. But it just kind of reminded me just now when I was cutting and I thought, oh, I'm cutting in a very bizarre way here. And I thought, well, I guess that's what I'm doing is trying to show you what I'm doing. So she can just be popped on there. So I'll just lightly distress ink her, you know, the background paper around the edges like that. <clears throat> there we go. And then I can just glue her on like that. Okay, and I'm trying to make this journal again using kind of um, how I would make my kits really. So um, it's quite fun to do that because obviously, you know, I've, I've made a lot of the elements and um, so then assembling the journal is kind of a bit faster, which is uh, quite nice rather than making each element individually as you come to each page which can be pretty time consuming and um, lengthy process so this is quite a nice way to do it so there we go and she's stuck on there so again obviously i've got bits and bobs that i could layer around her i've got a butterfly here i could kind of pop that on um again i've got that little postmark pop that on actually I quite like the postmark quite like the postmark and the butterfly so what I might do just to stress ink the butterfly a little bit because it was looking quite stark this has just been fussy cut out of some scrapbook paper so I could just stick that on there <clears throat> and I'll just distress ink the postmark as well and I'll just pop that on as well so um yeah just kind of a bit of fun and what's happened to my glue since I put the lid on that time it seems to have a big blob kind of a coming out of the side and be like a big sticky bit clogging up the nib anyway again kind of that's the type of thing that happens I guess when you're kind of filming and uh, trying to do things kind of neatly 
So, and I'll just pop that butterfly to the side. Looks pretty. So I'll just pop that like that. So that's that. So if I shut that now, and then I could stick things on here. Obviously, I did say about the um, postmark, which you know I've now obviously used. I have got some other elements here that I brought along for the um, tutorial. So I mean, I could stick something like that, although it's a little bit big, even if I cut it down. I've also got some little flowers that I've brought along. Again, these are those kind of mulberry flowers that I've just picked apart. So this blue one's quite nice, and I could just distress ink lightly around it like that and pop that on somewhere that's quite nice <clears throat> I could do a couple of them and then obviously kind of put something in the middle um, I don't think I bought any flat back pearls or anything like that with me this time I obviously was not so organised today um, I at work this morning so this is kind of quick rush one um, as soon as I got home I was determined to be really productive today so uh, I thought I'd crack on straight away and do a tutorial while I was making the journal and I just thought well I'm making this anyway so I'll attempt doing a tutorial to do it. I'm going to distress ink another one of those butterflies that I fussy cut out from the paper. I've got loads of them in there because it was an entire sheet of butterflies so I could have a butterfly somewhere on there which is quite nice but I, I quite like that cluster of flowers I don't know what everyone else thinks but I think they look quite nice so I'm going to stick those on down there so just pop one there and pop that on sorry I just glanced at that iPad which you know it's not in my eye line so I can't really see it necessarily and realised I was out of frame when sticking those down. I'm, I'm literally just applying glue. Um, and then I've got this little fabric flower here that's just been, um, you know, cut from some trim. So that looks quite nice. Um, do we think the butterfly on or off? I don't very often say this, but maybe off. <laughs> maybe off. Normally I'm always, um, yeah, stick it on, stick it on, but maybe off in this particular instance. So, and obviously I can finish those off by putting a little pearl or something else in the centre. Unfortunately, I haven't got my um, flat back pearls or anything with me at the moment, so I can't do that. I have got these little, um, you know, faux diamante trim that I love using. So I could just try and cut one of those off and try one of those, see how it looks. So just get rid of some of those little bits of the cotton kind of that holds the trim together. I thought I was going to get a call from the school today because my um, middle son, he's not feeling too well today, bless him. And um, I, I did say to him, well, you know, see how you get on and obviously get the school to give me a call if you're not feeling well. Um, and I'll come and get you. But so far, so good. So um, hopefully he's feeling all right and holding up OK today. So I could put these little um, gems in the middle. I'm not sure it really adds anything much to that. Um, so I'm going to actually not bother kind of popping them on. I don't think it really added anything to it. Um, so that's that. So I'm just going to then tie that up. <clears throat> I mean, again, actually, I love using bows and things. So, I mean, I could, um, you know, as well as, as the tying, but I mean actual bows like this. I'm not suggesting that I would use this bright blue colour, but I love using these bows. Um... So, I mean, I could just pop a bow on somewhere and I might do that when I kind of go back to my desk. But I haven't bought any with me other than the wrong colours, I'm afraid, so I can't do it now. Um, or I could put a bit of lace trim somewhere on the envelope. Actually, that looks, that looks really nice. So, back to you untying the envelope. I mean, obviously, you know, this is just for the purposes of the tutorial. And, I mean, obviously, when you come to make something like this, decorate it, obviously, how you like. And, um, you know, pop whatever you like on there. Um, I'm just literally kind of having a play around really now. And, you know, seeing what looks, what I think looks nice. Um, so I could pop that on there. What do you think? 
Um, yeah, well, I guess it depends what page it's going to go in into the book. And I haven't quite decided yet. So I'll just kind of show you, though, for the purposes of the tutorial, um, I'm not saying it's going to go on this particular page. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you how it would be in the book for the purposes of the tutorial. So obviously it would be knotted up <clears throat> like that. And this journal, obviously, as I say, is, has nothing stuck into it yet. It's just kind of blank, ready to go. And I would just stick that then into the page by literally gluing, and I would glue it really thoroughly all around the edge of this. So it's the edge of the base of the booklet and then the flap itself, you know, nowhere on the actual envelope itself. And then I'd put lots of glue in the middle, obviously, to make it really kind of... Um, sticking really well and then kind of glue it in just like that and then as you can see then it would work as a kind of extra page like that and then you could pop you know bits of ephemera or tags or whatever in there and then you've also got a lovely kind of booklet there um, to use as well for extra journaling so that's how that would be um yeah hope you liked it and hope you thought it was kind of um you know fun pretty easy to do and um yeah i really like using them i think this is the third one that i will have done and i kind of think they're maybe going to be a staple item in my my journals now because uh, i really like them and how they turn out so uh, hope that you found it interesting um and give it a go perhaps yourself so thanks very much for watching and um, hope you actually kind of, you know, got something out of uh, the process and yeah, have a great day. Thanks a lot then. Bye.